these uh, these aren't the easiest, but uh, you know, obviously this year um, you guys seem like it, 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 there was definitely the effort, but it seemed like you never really were able to reach that potential that everyone knew that the team was was capable of. Yeah, it was something right from the start we knew it was going to be a bit of a um, adventure, if you will, just from the group we had, the group that was leaving from last year, uh, new head coach. Um, it, it was going to be a puzzle we had to try to put together. Unfortunately, we were unable to get it together before the season ended. I thought there was times where we showed what we could look like. Uh, unfortunately, it just didn't happen as often as it should have. How much do you think the even the two playoff games that you guys had will help for some of the younger guys that had never really had that experience? Or maybe they had some of experience, but doing it in Colorado against that type of team. And you guys held your own, obviously, in both games. Mm -hmm. I, it should be very beneficial. Again, uh, Todd said it over and over, experience is only useful if you take some from it. So I, I hope that they do, because the way we played, the way they played, the atmosphere, um, kind of how we handled ourselves um, in the dressing room before, after games, it's something that players should be taking away from it. I hope they do. And there was enough there to build on, I think. You've obviously had a chance to play with a couple of different D partners and a couple of the young guys this year and last year, but even including the forwards, you go back to 2021 and you were here for what was seemed like half the team's first pro season. You know, what's it been like being a leader in the room with so many young guys these last couple of seasons? It's been a learning experience for me as well, because when you come to a new organization, you're never sure how how the dynamic is going to work because some organizations have different um, priorities than others. And this one, it was really based upon trying to be a leader. Um, they really wanted me to emphasize or basically be myself in every situation and really focus on helping others. And with a lot of these young kids coming from different scenarios and different upbringings and different, each of them kind of had different views on themselves, on the game, on what they want from it, and kind of learning from each of them. Uh, I think I was able to learn as well how to deal with them, um, what makes them tick, what makes kids of like kids, what they are, kids of the, uh, that age group uh, kind of tick, what makes them kind of excel, what their motivations are. So things like that, I think I was able to learn quite a bit, but I also, you start to notice a trend in kind of the players and the people that this organization tries to draft player you ended up finishing the season alongside is Cole Krieger and he's a new member of the organization so fans might not know him as much I mean why should they maybe be excited about him and what was it like for you to uh he's not maybe as much of a kid as some of these other players he's a little bit older a little bit more mature yeah yeah mature is definitely one of the things that he has maturity pardon me is something that he has that others might not um he's a guy who like you said went through college He's been working for the last couple summers. He's someone who has a good head on his shoulders. Not saying the others don't, but he's just someone who's got a different perspective. Um, and like you said, his maturity levels just are that that much higher than the others. On the ice, what to be excited about? I'm trying to think of a different term other than stallion. <laughs> but how he skates is just something that God given, but at the same time, he's clearly worked at it because he's an excellent skater. His ability to jump up in the rush and even get back and play is something that even at an NHL level would be special. So once he kind of uh, chisels around a few of the edges, maybe um, gets a bit better understanding of the pro game, a few things here and there, I, I don't see why he can't be someone who's playing every night in the playoffs for an NHL team. You obviously had participated in some you know, King's content with, you know, the world juniors and analyzing some of the prospects and stuff. Well, with the way that you view the game and with the way that you view prospects, how quickly do you dial in on some of those things that, for example, Cole Krieger does really well once he gets here? I think I, I'm able to dial in a bit quicker than others because that's kind of been my role my entire career is playing with that guy who first comes to the team. Usually I, I kind of pride myself on knowing things about our team uh, better than others because that's what I need to do to be successful. I might not have the same physical tools as other guys, so I need to be mentally uh, above. So for a guy like Cole, or when I played with Jordan Spence, or when I played with Helgi, or when I played with Dursey, I kind of need to learn what they do well and what they don't do well so I can help them. Because normally if I'm playing with them, the better they are, the better I am. So I need to learn those things quickly. And even on past teams, that's been my role. So I think I'm able to pick it up quicker because that's been a necessity of mine, almost uh, um, an evolutionary thing. <laughs> Do you notice uh, with Marco taking over, because he's been around pro hockey for so long that 
his style. Maybe when you look back to, to John Robleski, who's coming from a junior program, that maybe it was where Marco kind of did things a little bit more like a, a pro or pro style, maybe? It's a good point because all you have to do is meet the two of them off the ice and you know that there's going to be a very different approach. Um, Marco is someone who clearly has been around the pro game for a long time. Um, he's someone who you can also tell was a very good player because he understands things and it might not be as easy to, for him to explain why players should be doing the things they do because he he was able to do them for his whole career. So when he comes to the American Hockey League for the first time and players aren't able to do the things on a consistent basis that he was able to do, it might get frustrating at times. Um, but what Marco brings also is a professionalism that few coaches have had, really he can do. Um, he's able to bring it day after day after day, just how he carries himself. He's always prepared. Um, he's someone who there's never gonna be a new scenario that he hasn't seen before. So I think Marco brought a professionalism to our group that I think a lot of guys needed. What's it been like uh, working with, with Chris Hyde over the past couple of years? I mean, you guys must know each other pretty well mm -hmm. at this point, uh, and he's a pretty detailed person uh, as he prepares. Uh, Hyde and I have become uh, very close. Um, he's a wonderful man. Um, so I think that's first and foremost is what kind of drew me to respecting him because uh, again, it's a lot easier to work with someone who you respect and Hyder is someone who is, thinks the world of everyone, gives everyone the benefit of the doubt, uh, has a positive outlook on a lot of things, but sometimes I might disagree. <laughs> um, he's got a positive outlook on so many different things. And like you said, he's detail oriented. Uh, someone who's my age, you want to be considered relevant. You just want to be seen as someone who uh, is will uh, someone who's worth the time because there's a lot of times um, where you feel like I'm not worth it or you feel like I'm not the priority here. Whereas Hyder makes everyone feel like they are. Um, there's sometimes this, his coaching may be a bit tedious because he is so detail oriented. But again, the more information he can give us, the more we're able to work with. If you don't want to use the information, fine, but Hyder gives you everything you need to be successful. What is that dynamic like when you have somebody that's so detailed oriented like him paired with, you know, a coach like Marco, who obviously played a really long time in the NHL and you have such a interesting mix of guys of both veteran leaders and so many young guys that are still prospects. It's that's the thing. The American Hockey League brings those stuff to like different dichotomies all the time. And for instance, this year, it might have taken a bit of time for them to kind of understand how to play off of each other, um, how Marco's style blends with Hyder's style because every good coaching staff I've been a part of, they understand how to kind of play off each other. Um, I think why they were able to make it work near the end there was, again, they have a clear respect for each other. They're both people who seem to put um, people's needs before the needs of the hockey team. And because of that, they were able to benefit from it. I think Hyder is someone, like I said, extremely detail oriented. Uh, Marco uh, isn't quite as detail-oriented because he is more about the process and he's more about kind of the nature of how you need to act and how you need to play to be a professional hockey player. And I think that they complement each other well and the, their ability to bounce off each other really got better as it went on. What's your off season usually like? Uh, are you keeping it the same this year? Any, any changes? The only changes for me this summer will be I'm going to be tagging along with my wife a bit more for a few of her business trips. Um, she's got to travel around a bit this summer for business and I get to kind of just be there and help in any way I can or annoy in any way I can. <laughs> um, it's probably the more likely term. Aside from that, training in Toronto, uh, helping run some skates and seeing friends and family.